Hello there. My name is David Arena. I'm a Senior Specialist and Applications Engineer on the 3D Scanning Team here at GoEngineer. Today's video is going to show five different methods to create reference vectors inside of Geomagic Design X. Reference vectors are very integral into the software as they can establish the direction of a planar sketch as well as provide the axis of rotation for a rotational sketch. Today's video is going to focus on rotational vectors. Let's get started. So, as mentioned in the PowerPoint, I'm going to show five different methods of creating a vector, in this case for a revolved sketch that will act as a cut to cut the solid body of the main first feature. So here we're looking at a scan. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the wireframe. And you can see here as we zoom in that basically a scan from a 3D scanner is comprised of thousands of triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the wireframe off. And also to point out here, we actually did start with our first feature, the extrude number one. You can see our solid body here. The extrude was based off of our first sketch, which is sketch the mesh sketch here. We're going to actually create the vector using the sketch. So one thing I'm going to do though prior to this, maybe to show best practices with using the sketch here. What I want to do is also kind of point out here the way that this part was oriented. Part was oriented with the origin in the middle between these two whole centers. So basically when I did the sketch itself, assume some symmetry here. That should mean where that arc center point I'm going to actually use is essentially at the zero position with respect to the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the sketch just to kind of point out good practices here for design intent. We want to ensure that the center point is exactly at zero, which it is. This is just done to confirm. I would do this actually during the sketch itself, but just to kind of point that out, it's always good to go back if you haven't done it, just to make sure. So after we check that out, we're going to go ahead and create a vector. First off, I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector here using this sketch. So you can see here that also the features here essentially are, we're not modeling this as circles, but it's basically the features would be concentric to that arc. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to create a vector. And the method I'm going to use here is the position and direction method. So on position, I'm going to check the box here. And I'm going to select the center of that arc in the sketch as the position and the direction. If we look here in the lower left of the screen, you can see how the part is oriented. So we're going to be basically normal to the Y axis. So on the direction, I'm going to come up on the direction and pick the Y. So that'll be normal to the Y axis, basically perpendicular to the top plane. I'll accept that. And now we have a vector to work with. So I'm going to create a mesh sketch. I'm going to right mouse click on the screen and say mesh sketch. I'm going to change it to rotational method. So we're looking for an axis here. So it'll be a vector number one as the axis. The base plane could be the top plane here. So I'll pick that. And then you can see here we have a kind of a preview of the profile that we need to create. So this virtual plane is cutting through the mesh at that location, displaying the information that we have to work with to create our own sketch. With a revolve sketch, we don't need to generate the whole profile. We just need half. So I'm going to crop out the information here just to, for clarity. And now it puts us normal to our sketch plane. And now I can start to sketch our profile. So I'm going to start with our basically axis of rotation. It's going to be a constructed line basically snapping to the vector here. And then I'll turn off for construction and start to basically model vertical lines and horizontal lines to create a closed profile for our revolve sketch. So it's just a matter of drawing our geometry. You notice that as we draw, some constraints are built in. Now I just need to basically finish by trimming up the corners on the geometry. So I'm going to trim these two lines together. 
continue on trimming up these lines. Once I'm finished, I can accept the trim and then I have enough information to basically do a revolve. So I'm going to say I want to do a revolution and it previews the 360 degree preview. And I'm also going to say cut because we're going to do a cut on the main body. I'm going to go ahead and turn on that body so you can see it now. So that's our second feature, that revolve cut. And that is our first method of creating a vector. So now we're going to look at a second method on creating a vector. Here we have the mesh and we have a solid body. And if you look here, the circular feature on that edge there was not generated by this by the sketch behind it. So it, and sometimes you'll have a, a geometry where you put a fillet on it instead of creating it at the sketch level. And at that point, we can actually use the solid body or the edge of the solid body to extract some geometry, which will then be used to extract a vector. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a sketch. I'm going to select the edge there and right mouse click and say convert entities. Then I'm going to make that arc for construction and then simply exit the sketch. And now you can see I have an arc with a center point. So I'm going to go on my right mouse button, say I want to create a vector. Again, using the position and direction method. So position and then direction Y. And that is my vector. So again, this is the second method using a edge of a solid body. On the third method of creating a vector, we're going to not use a sketch nor use a solid body. We're going to create a new sketch, a mesh sketch on a plane, and we're going to establish a reference vector that could be used downstream for a revolved feature. So I'm going to go ahead and start by creating a mesh sketch on the front plane. I'm going to drag up the offset here so I can see a clear profile. I'm going to crop it out a little bit here and accept that setup. Now I'm going to create a circle using the fit polyline method and quickly create a circle and location there. Then I'm going to change that circle to a constructed circle. Now I can exit the sketch. Now use the previous methods that we used before, position and direction method. So position here would be the center of that circle. On the direction, if we look at the lower left here, we can see it's normal to the Z axis. So we're going to pick on Z and create a vector. So now this vector could be used for downstream purposes, such as a revolve sketch to do a cut on the solid body. Let's look at the fourth method to create a vector for a revolve sketch. Here we're actually going to make a selection on the mesh itself using our smart selection tool. We're going to focus on the inside of this scan. Once the triangles are selected, we're going to go ahead and classify this using regions inside the software and insert a local region. What that does, it lets the software analyze the selection and determine what shape it is. Here it sees this as a cylinder. So from that we can establish a vector and change the definition. Instead of position and direction we're going to say find cylinder axis. Here we have some options as such as remove outlier and we can also force the direction by using this radio button here. Uh, use specific direction as is and then tell it direction we're looking for. We are going to, again, use the Y axis. So we're going to go ahead and click on direction, click on the Y axis. That will make the vector perpendicular to the coordinate system. We can go ahead and kind of review that and accept it. Now this vector can be used for a revolve sketch. This is the fourth method to create a reference vector for a revolve sketch. In the fifth and last version of creating a vector, we're actually going to not only create a vector, but actually create the entire revolve feature at the same time. Now this is going to involve 
uh, creating regions globally. In version number four, I showed how to insert a region locally. This time we're going to run the auto segment command against the entire mesh. What's going to happen here is the software is looking at the topology and it's going to classify different shapes into different regions. So you can see here, it kind of color codes things. If I touch on a face, it says it's a plane. Here's a cylinder and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a wizard and the wizards rely on the region, so they're mandatory. So we're going to run the revolution wizard. We also need to tell the software what we want to do here. So we're going to do a solid cut in this case. We have a, a main body already here. So we're going to insert a cut. So I need to tell the software which regions I want to include using this feature. So from the inside out, I'm just going to select the various regions and go to the next step. Here we get a preview of what the Revolve Cut's going to look like. We have some options here as well in the menu. For example, if I want to remove these small fillets and add them later, I can go ahead and turn those off. So now I have sharp edges there and we can add a fillet downstream. So once this looks pretty good, I'll just go ahead and accept that command. And if I turn on my solid body here, you can see now that we created that revolved cut. Also noticed here in the tree that we actually created a vector, a plane, the sketch itself, and then we executed the revolve cut. One thing I'm going to show here, since we did this without kind of going through each step, if you're not paying attention, what happens is I'm going to measure an angle between the top plane here and the vector that was created. You can see that it's not 90 degrees. For design intent purposes, we would want that to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to show you the missing part that we kind of skipped over. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to actually hit Control Z to undo that entire function. Now I'm going to go back into the Revolution Wizard and I'm going to rerun this, but this time I'm going to show you something that you should pay attention to when you run this command. What I needed to do is actually click on this custom revolution axis and tell the software basically that the direction of my vector needed to be normal to or perpendicular to that top plane. Again, I'm going to say solid cut, execute the function. And again, we get a preview here. I'll just go ahead and accept that. Now when I go back to measure this angle, between the top plane and the vector, you can see it's perfectly 90 degrees. That is what we were looking for. So that concludes this video on how to create vectors five different ways. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something. Thank you. Bye-bye.